The Torah tells us, Vayeshev Yaakov Be'eretz Meguri Aviv Be'eretz Canaan. Yaakov, Jacob, settled in the land of his father's sojournings. Yaakov settled where his father had merely sojourned. Yitzhak recognized as no one ever else has, that this world is no more than a corridor, that we're just passing through. Not God forbid that Yaakov was enamored of this world, but his lack of attachment to this world did not compare with his father's. And that minute bias has been amplified down the generations. We are the children of Israel, of Yisrael, of Yaakov. Yaakov wanted to dwell in tranquility where his father Yitzhak had only sojourned. And as a result, Yaakov experienced the heart-wrenching loss of his favorite son, Yosef. And why Yosef? Yosef started off as a dreamer on a grand scale. He saw the sun and the moon and the stars bowing down to him. And in the end, he was reduced to interpreting the dreams of Pharaoh's chief wine chamberlain, who promptly forgot Yosef as soon as he got out of prison. Just as it was in Egypt, so it's been throughout Jewish history in exile. The great-great-grandchildren of Israel dream our dreams, be it in Russia or Germany or America. We want to change the world. We attach ourselves to every new ism that comes along. Show me an idealistic movement in the last 200 years and I'll show you a Jew or many Jews behind it and in the forefront of it. How is it that we Jews allow ourselves to dream these dreams? Because we start to feel very comfortable in our surroundings. We start to see ourselves as dwellers where our parents only saw themselves as foreign residents. Look at every one of those movements. They all have one thing strangely in common. The wine chamberlain forgets us. The movement has sudden and total amnesia as to who was there at the start of the whole thing. The same movement turns around and accuses the Jews of being the very enemy they're trying to eradicate. A Jew prays three times a day. Probably the most difficult of those prayers is Mincha, the afternoon prayer. In the morning, the day's just beginning, before the world fills with noise and bustle, we've got space in our minds to contemplate the eternal and the unchanging. And similarly at night, the world is winding down and we can catch our breaths and talk to God in peace and tranquility. But in the middle of the afternoon, when we're engrossed in this world, it takes a real wrench to step outside and speak to God. Maybe that's one of the reasons we start off the Mincha prayer, the service that Yitzhak, Isaac, instituted with the words, Ashrei Yoshevei Veisecho, happy are those who dwell in your house. Happy is the person who knows that his permanent residence is God's house in the spiritual world, and that this world is no more than a rented apartment.